Oh man, what a heart, what a heartbreaking uh, contest! I think for the first time, we finally produced some evidence that suggests the direction in which we're trying to head in at Detroit Mercy defensively. For the first time, you know, we've been able to hold an opponent for a game to 33% from the floor. Typically, we want, we want them to be 40% field goal percentage defense or below. Um, we want to keep people, you know, typically under 33% from three. We um, held them to 25%. You know, obviously, uh, we can't defend the free throw line because that's against the rules of the game. But we out-rebounded now our third opponent in a row. Um, and even with a shortened bench uh, due to the um, – Limitations of Cam Chapman not being available tonight uh, due to an injury that he sustained last game. I couldn't be more proud of this group because they showed the ability to play hard, work smart. I thought they were tough. I thought they finished strong for the great majority, you know, of the possessions out there. But more importantly, they stayed together. And so, again, if Northern Kentucky, who I have a great deal of respect for, in the Horizon League is one of the best that our league has to offer. I'm pretty proud of my group. Uh, at least, uh, I mean, I thought Jaleel today, is he starting to look more like the force that he was in the post last year? Uh, I know he had foul trouble, but when he had time down there against McDonald's, it seemed like he's starting to look like the guy that he was uh, last season. Yeah, and, and, the, and the, the great thing about, you know, what Jaleel was able to do uh, today, um, had more to do with leadership than anything. You know, anytime you get a senior out there that's directing traffic defensively, uh, getting guys in the right spot offensively, at the post slash center position, I think that's unique. Um, one of the things that I have a great deal of respect for is the journey of Jaleel Hogan. I mean, he's had a battle uh, fighting, you know, academically every year. He's been here prior to my tenure, during my tenure. And, you know, to see him just inch closer and closer to where he wants to be, um, my hat's off to him. He was very emotional after the game, as you can imagine. You know, but here's a young man that, you know, without question, you know, for today uh, and many other games before that, left it all on the floor. And that missed dunk, I mean, is that just something would you like to see him just kind of put it in, or is that that's just part of the game? Sometimes? Yeah, it's just part of the game. You know, again, you know, he's a passionate guy, and so – you know, in those instances where you talk about, you know, that play, you know, maybe no different than maybe one of the layup opportunities we had down the stretch with one of our guards. I can't remember who it was, Corey or Josh. You know, you just want them to convert, you know. But, again, uh, you never knock, you know, the enthusiasm and the passion, you know, um, with anybody that's trying to make a play to really rally the troops. What was the game plan going into this contest to stop Drew McDonald? Well, I don't know if there's a specific game plan. As you notice, we played him straight up in the post. And part of our defensive principles is simply this. We want to make sure we keep the ball in front of us better than in years past, games past, short term. And we want, we want to make people shoot over us. Okay, so keeping your body between man and basket is critical. Okay, jump into the basketball when it's passed. Shrinking the court by being in the gaps versus denying and making that court bigger for offenses that can drive downhill. Our two-point field goal percentage defense is something that's been elusive to us this year. And so for us to try to limit the touches by denying easy passes into the high post, fronting the post, and limiting his touches, the best defense that you can play against a terrific player like Drew McDonald is to not let him get the ball. That would be my short answer. And I know it was a great defensive effort against the second best scoring team in the Horizon League, the Horizon League's best. But how much does it stink to still lose this game and you come so darn close to winning? Well, losing stinks, period. Okay, I'm a winner. Always been a winner. Won everywhere I've been. You know, we're, we're building a program. Um, but before you win, you have to establish a winning culture, winning habits, championship conversations. And we are actually on the pathway towards that, okay? So now we come out of our non-conference schedule uh, saying that, okay, this team can put 20 minutes together. Then we get into conference play, and we're finding ourselves putting 33 minutes together, okay? Wisconsin, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, the game is tied at 72-all in both games. 
you know, and then now the decision's down the stretch. Now you move forward to the game against Wright State. It's 66-65 with five minutes and 46 seconds remaining. Okay, now we're in a, we're in a game where it's a two-point contest or maybe we're up to with two minutes to go. So we're chipping away, and it's just a matter of time before we put it all together. But again, systemically it's important for me as a coach and for our staff as well and our players to understand the journey and the path towards winning. Talent is never enough. We have plenty of that. Now it's about the discipline, it's about the timing, it's about the execution and the precision that it takes to win consistently on each possession. So how, how close do you think the team actually is uh, to being where you want it to be? I would throw that question right back at you. When you watch today's game, essentially what you saw as a team that's very, very close. Anybody that doesn't think we're close, Northern Kentucky is a very good team. Are they not? Mm -hmm. So the way we competed today, field goal percentage defense, that's not a fluke. How do you sustain that focus on every opponent? We outscored Wright State by nine in the second half. And I asked the team today to take that momentum and that mindset into this game. And that's essentially what we're after. Okay, and we're just trying to expand our emotional will base that allows us to have continuity, connectivity, you know, and sustainability moving forward in every contest when we take the court home or on the road. Coach, uh, I think you've rebounded opponents now three of the last four games, maybe three in a row. Um, how important is it to get the, uh, the rebounding help from the guards? I mean, just not leave it off to the big man down low, but Corey coming off 13 rebounds today. I know that Josh, and Jermaine Jackson have had you know, rebound games, five, six plus. How important is it for everyone to rebound this team and just really limit other teams' second chance points? It's critically important because, again, in the game of basketball, you talk about possessions. Possessions matter. I mean, anytime we can grab 16 offensive rebounds, that's 16 more opportunities we had to get the basketball. Now we're talking about trying to value the ball better, you know, in terms of taking care of it with regards to turnovers. But the rebounding point is most compelling on two fronts. One, um, obviously, my thought process, even in the first game I coached at Virginia Tech, and even upon my return, was to work back towards the migration plan of having a bigger lineup. So you see larger six foot six, six foot seven, three men on the court. You see larger four men, you know, in Cam Chapman uh, tonight, Roshan Prince, Cole Long those types. Obviously, you see fives in there. Hogan, you know, Blackshear, um, soon to be, you know, um, Ballantyne and, and, and Eichler is getting better in practices, so they'll be earning minutes soon. But size matters as it relates to rebounding. The other component, which would be my second point, is simply this. If I don't get the rebound, my opponent, which means the guy that I'm guarding on that possession, isn't getting it either. And so if our guards can come in and gang a rebound, now that's one less outlet pass we make because, again, we're the number one primary break offensive team in the league at 23 points a game. Northern Kentucky is number three. Okay, so everybody knows that we can get out and run, but it all starts by being good on the glass defensively and then guards coming in and helping us clean up because, generally speaking, the ones and the twos don't go most nights. So Corey Allen and those guys, my hats is off to him. I think he's uh, taking a step forward in his maturation process. I have been tough on Corey, you know, because I expect, you know, leadership out of him each and every game. And I thought he responded marvelously today. How much did you miss Cam Chapman and his presence out there today? Well, again, more than anything else, uh, the number one thing that you look for with Cam Chapman as they went zone down the stretch is another guy that can stretch the defense, another guy that can flash in the teeth of a defense and throw elite level passes. You know, Cam Chapman is a pro, okay? He's a first team, all league guy, um, and it's not a fluke. You know, this kid is probably one of the more consistent players in the country, and I couldn't, you know, uh, be, you know, more. Um, you know, at a heartache, you know, that I didn't have him available tonight. But we hope that he um, recovers quickly, you know, um, from his uh, head injury, you know. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I thought the next man up guy stepped up nicely by committee in his absence. As a coach, I mean, you talk about it, it's a close game. You obviously want to be there at the end. Is it a little more frustrating when the last few possessions, they maybe go into that one three one you weren't really getting looks at the basket? Is that even a little tougher when you're just turning over at those critical moments and not missing shots necessarily? Without question. And like I told my team, you know, as a, as a head coach, you take full responsibility. The, the blame, you know, for any of those possessions, I'm taking all of that. 
okay, as the head coach. I'm not one of those guys who's going to be elusive and say, oh, we should have passed it better and stuff like that. You know, having them in position to be in position is my job. And I take full responsibility for that. Hats off to Northern Kentucky by that short changeup in their defense. We knew that that was a part of their package, you know. Um, but nonetheless, you know, uh, it was very fleeting for us to really, you know, communicate and get guys in the proper spots because we're typically a pretty good zone team, no matter who throws a zone on us, due to our good shooting and our good passing. But again, um, tonight, you know, uh, didn't quite do the trick. But at least the game, maybe going forward, and even once tournament time comes around, it sort of lets you know there's nobody you can't. Play with essentially in the Again, <laughs> that's such a great point. Seattle, I think Green Bay, correct me if I'm wrong, UCLA, Michigan, and Virginia Tech are the only games that we have dropped by double digits. Every other game is by three possessions or less. Anybody that thinks that this team is not capable of beating them on any given night and anybody that thinks that we're not capable of turning this thing around and getting into the winning side, keep coming to the games.